So this is some interesting news that came out of the blue for me because I guess maybe I wasn't really paying enough close attention to the climate out there and to the response of Suprema fans. But it looks like um, it has been confirmed now that Tremaine Emery has reportedly left his position as creative director at Supreme, which is to me a bit of a shock. I'm not going to lie. I did not see this one coming. But after reading some stuff online and seeing the response of fans from his previous collections, allegedly that were under his kind of tutelage and stuff that he designed for, it looks like Supreme fans have never really been that sold on Tremaine Emery's um, appointment over that Supreme so maybe this was always on the card somewhere along the line but let's read the article here courtesy of Complex that sheds some light on what happened and why it may have happened so um, as it continues here I see a picture of Tremaine the article says as follows Tremaine Emery has reportedly left his role as creative director of Supreme sources have told um, Complex that Supreme's full 2023 collection will be the last under Emery's creative direction the reason for Emery's abrupture um, abrupt departure sorry is currently unknown Emery Denim Tears and Supreme have not responded to Complex's request of comment Emery was appointed as a streetwear's brand first creative director in february 2022 the spring summer 2023 collection was his first under creative direction um the brand recently released their first pieces from this full 2023 collection emory's second full collection which was met with warm receptions from fans of the brand across his first two seasons emory injected his own vision for the brand he created varsity jackets featuring art by close friend and cactus plant flea market founder cynthia lou derived many collaboration with Kugi and um uh, that which he dubbed a love letter to the block and a photo t-shirt featuring popular nba young boy um popular rapper nba young boy a perfect way to keep the young generation interested in a recent interview with just Ma magazine emory shared his thoughts on industry versus community validation that feel especially relevant in light of his departure from supreme the quote i would caution kids who care about validation of these big conglomerates and media giants because these conglomerates are banks lvmh is a bank caring group is a bank paramount's a bank this is late stage capitalism. These institutions will finance a designer, an artist, a band, a director, a writer, whatever, to make something to get more money than what they put in. That's what it's about for them. If you seek their validation because so-and-so made you creative director, you're losing. In fact, you've already lost. But if you seek validation firstly in yourself, secondly in the community that you care about and who cares about you, you've got a chance to live a life without regrets. Emery's unique approach to design will still be realized through his own brand Denim Tears, which has made the mark in fashion industry in recent years with storytelling of the African diaspora through clothing. Early this year, collection co-designed by Emery with Dior, aptly titled D uh, Dior Tears, released to the world. This month, Denim Tears celebrates its fourth year as a brand. And the quote says, I kind of like to see Denim Tears as a supreme for black people and anyone who wants to celebrate or commemorate what we've been through, Emery told Najee Reed of RSVP in a 2020 in uh, interview. It's using t-shirts as billboards for knowledge and expression, he says. As for Supreme, it remains to be seen if they'll hire another creative director to fulfill Emery's role um, or go back to his old ways. The brand had has had its fair share of struggles in recent years. Some people have been vocal about the long-running streetwear brand being dead. Financial issues have also made headlines. In June, VF Corp's annual report revealed that Supreme's revenue declined in the first fiscal year um, that ended in March 2023. VF Corp acquired Supreme for $2.1 in 2020. So, what do I think happened here? A um, couple of theories. There could be a few of them out there. There's some. There's people out there saying categorically that it was... Uh, not a good fit people inside the company are basically saying they didn't like his vision stylistically they didn't see anything that kind of matched and stuff and maybe the work wasn't good in the end which you'd imagine if you're somebody like Tremaine it would be a little bit embarrassing because I don't feel like somebody that designs on a level that he designs at with the experience that he has being a, a New Yorker being plugged into the scene knowing a lot of the people uh, you know at the brand before he even started to work there knowing a lot about the brand int intrinsically because of just you know how old he is and how long he's been around it's kind of embarrassing that you aren't able to somehow able to kind of plug in a little bit of what you do into what they do because essentially what Supreme does isn't that difficult to kind of figure out you know what I mean especially if you're an actually talented designer and know your way around Around, you know ideas and executing them because essentially it's all the same sort of stuff with the exception of some of the current 
quote unquote cut and sew pieces it's not like you're designing for a couture house or something right you're essentially doing t-shirts and hoodies um a few jackets here and there but it shouldn't be that difficult to imbue some of your taste in what they already do and kind of you know further the message further the brand further the voice um you know maybe broaden the the scope of who they appeal to and keep things fresh it shouldn't be too difficult to do that so that's a little bit of a you know a slight on his behalf if that's the case um there are some people here that say oh the design's a bit of a shit i don't really see how you can say that is all tremaine's fault because without any knowledge on the inside of supreme none of us on the outside are ever going to know exactly what he designed because you know the stuff that he's designed in-house and usually if you're a creative director from what i understand of creative director roles some of them require you to be hands-on designing and whatever it may be but some of it is actually maybe like a leadership role like a you know being able to maybe spec out the overall theme of a collection right um the inspirations behind it whatever it may be right and then maybe you know using that as a springboard to kind of you know execute some ideas but it doesn't actually mean he's sitting there and designing 3m jackets so it can be difficult to kind of figure out what he designed was it his fault and then if you then figure out what he designed then you can maybe decide whether or not he's actually responsible for the sales not being as good or whatever maybe go through because that's what people are basically saying the sales weren't as great they weren't met they weren't hitting targets and obviously someone's head had to roll and of course being the creative director in the face of it he was maybe the first person that had to kick you know um kind of you know kick the can but you know what i mean he is personal that had to get, get a boot but then another theory that i'm thinking about might be more might make a lot of sense it might be a combination of things because if you read an article I remember, or read the interview, I remember I listened to a few months ago that Tremaine was on some podcast talking about he had health issues, which I didn't really know much about. So he had these health issues that he went through. I think it was an aneurysm or something. He was in hospital for a very long time and he essentially nearly died. I'm recovering. So I had, a, uh, I had an aneurysm, I had a lower aortic aneurysm. And um, I'm recovering, you know, eight out of 10 people pass from having it. So I was fortunate enough to survive it. Went in the hospital in October and um, end of December, right before New Year's, got out. So been spending most of my time recovering, um, doing physical therapy, because the aneurysm, the lower aortic aneurysm really, it messed up my legs. So I'm just building up muscle in my legs and waiting on some nerves to wake up, so yeah. But my health is great. I'm actually healthier than probably I've been in a long time. Um, I had a lot of, I had and have a lot of support from people in my life. And yeah, I'm good. I mean, I imagine this sort of slowdown, like this sort of taking, you know, sort of recovery time is probably the first time in a while that you've really slowed down, right? Yeah, yeah, um, definitely. It's been interesting because it's like, also, since I'm, I'm in New York, so I hadn't lived in New York in 13 years. Um, I've been on, you know, was living in London since 2010 for seven years and then moved to L.A. and then moved to New York in 2022, February. And my first day at Supreme was on Valentine's Day, February 14th. But it's been the first time I've just been like not on an airplane every week or like on a train, you know, trains, planes, automobiles, yeah. you know, so it's been good. A lot of it, part of it was just like, my, when I was in the hospital, my focus was just getting out the hospital, surviving, doing what I could to um, listen to the doctors. And it's interesting when you get that sick, when you're like on the verge of death, which was like a couple of times whilst I was in the hospital, it's, you know, willpower definitely you got to want to be here. That plays a part of it. Going through that, just after you get announced as Supreme Creator, because I think it just happened a few basically months after that got announced and then having to kind of struggle through that may have been quite difficult to kind of do. But then at the same time, as flipping the universe will have it, his brand, his brand is blowing up. Um, he's now maybe, you know, I'd imagine if you're that close to death, your kind of vision and your focus becomes laser. Um, you want to just, you know, put away all distractions and just focus on your message. And if he actually believes that his brand is a platform to kind of speak about the African diaspora and kind of further a message and inspire people and tell these interesting stories, then why would you bother, you know, going and working for a Supreme if you really don't care about that thing? And you 
you think this is the thing that's actually going to write your legacy this is the thing that's actually going to um, make the necessary change in society or in the world that you actually want to see or oh, that's actually going to maybe outlive you blah de, blah 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 so maybe that's all part of the issue kind of tied into it um but then i look at some of the stuff online and this is the reply from ages ago this is maybe from what may 2023 right look at how tremaine was getting treated in the flipping you know supreme internet comment space and shit so this is clear indication that maybe the fans just didn't like his appointment maybe weren't fans of denim tears and were maybe a little bit underwhelmed that he was hired because they just assumed he was gonna go there and do like cotton reef box logos or something right maybe that's what they thought so this is from supreme drops it says tremaine emery reacting to someone saying supreme died when he joined and the person says as follows hate to say it but prem died when you joined right and which is you know a little bit mean to say this to be fair especially considering what he went through illness wise but i don't think this guy knew that he was ill to be fair i don't think he knew i think he just said it to be a bit cunty and whatnot but then tremaine replied you must be really in pain hurting bad inside to hop in my comments troll me in a post about me barely surviving an aneurysm ain't no surgery that can save you from your sickness good luck to you so maybe he was responding to the fact that he was ill i don't know but either way like you can tell the supreme fans weren't really fans of his so maybe this is for the better maybe he kind of realized hey these guys are giving me too much grief this job isn't that serious because you know having been aware of tremaine and i don't really know him too well but having been aware of him from afar i know that he was never always like a clothing fashiony guy or just like a cool style guy or cool, a kind of cool guy overall in the same way that heron Preston is so i think guys like that won't really hold these type of jobs on the pedestal that probably someone like i would like i think someone like a tremaine someone like a heron Preston could easily walk away from supreme and not be that bothered from it because for them it's all about idea execution they're about ideas they're about a certain message you know Tr tremaine's got his um you know uh forwarding the black experience or black diaspora kind of conversation there you've got heron preston talking about new york and you know recycling and all that sort of shit so those guys i can imagine if they can with if they were to get those jobs they could easily walk away from those jobs because they're not really hold them on a pedestal and they're not that prestigious to them in that regard that they would kind of bend over backwards and accept any kind of abuse just to have that job so i can kind of see that being the case um so i could imagine if you're tremaine you know thinking about your health thinking about you know nearly dying thinking about the fact that you know your, your brand's blowing up and then you're getting all this hate from all these fans maybe you're like you know what this ain't worth it i'm gonna step aside and do my own thing so they might that may not be a combination of stuff but i just think for somebody that came through with this collection for the supreme Four 2023 collection i think he just deserved a couple more just for the sake of it because i feel like this might have been one of the strongest they've done in recent years and again this isn't just all his doing because you know collections aren't just made by one person i'm sure there are many people that kind of played a part in this but if he did a quote-unquote dud in spring 2023 and then was able to bounce right back with this i think it clearly shows that he was learning on the job and figuring it out and he would have then de delivered even a better collection come spring of next year so it's a shame he wasn't able to do that but i guess it's the nature of the beast when you're supreme and you're you know you basically accept investment from a vf corp they're going to put different constraints different requirements um they're going to have different kpis different targets and shit that they want you to hit and if you don't hit them somebody's heads need to roll because they've invested money and they're going to need to call some shots they're going to need to see that you're making some effort to change and rectify things because they have their own board to kind of and you know shareholders and stuff that they've got to satisfy so there's loads of conflicting things that kind of play into the decision making process of how supreme move nowadays so maybe he's just a you know um a victim of that kind of thing going on and less so his own work like i said i think if it is an issue of his own work i would be highly embarrassed because i feel like supreme and what they do for as great as it is and it's a brand i love and i've always loved it from the beginning of when i got into streetwear supreme and bape and basically the hundreds were brands that kind of you know taught me everything i know about clothes and fashion and culture and music and art and all that stuff it's crazy how much i've kind of gained from i've learned from all those kind of guys and kind of being around there and go to a store and learn people that worked there and whatnot it's all kind of been a crazy experience from the forums or anything i fucking love it but let's not kind of you know let's not mince our words this isn't fucking high level fashion and shit this is streetwear that tremaine also does in his own way um i think he should easily be able to imbue his own taste and you know whatever into what they do so if he was not able to do that and not able to kind of fulfill that that is basically a bit of a slight and i would be a little bit embarrassed about it and i'm hoping if that is the case i'm hoping that he's able to be honest about it 
and just own up and say, yep, yeah, you know, I didn't meet the grade. I wasn't good enough to do the job, but it was a good experience. I'm going to learn from it. Because I feel like a lot of kids could learn from that also to realize that, hey, somebody at the top of his game at Tremaine, even he found it difficult to execute his kind of ideas at that level. Because if it turns into him making it into an issue that it was more than his actual work and there was other forces conspiring against him, that would be a real shame. If it isn't that, I hope it that there's somehow we find out. I don't think we will. It's not really, you know, we don't really des you know, deserve anyone know what owes us fans explanation. But I would love to see there be an option where we get to hear from him and he tells us exactly what went on. Um, checking out these Instagram, I don't really see anything on here that kind of gives us indication on what went on. Um, there's actually a picture here from the article I need to actually check out here that kind of shows you an effect of maybe the, you know, the illness that he was kind of going through because he does look very, very gaunt and skinny here compared to how he usually looks. Um, and, you know, he's lost a lot of weight. Maybe it's just through fitness and stuff. But from what I can tell, looking at his pictures and being sick myself sometimes, you can tell this is definitely the result of somebody being a bit sickly so maybe the illness just kind of made him realize certain things he's like you know what i'm not gonna fuck around wasting time on something that i'm not super passionate about and i'm gonna now start focusing in on the things that i really really give a shit about going forward and kind of solidify that because you only get one life and i'm not gonna waste my time kind of fulfilling somebody else's brand and message when i can just be focused and doing it my own because clearly denim tears is going places and it's kind of got only getting bigger and better and better i've just seen recently bloody osiris Osiris, sorry, debuting that fucking all leather um cotton reef set, which looks fucking phenomenal. We saw the fucking roadblock it caused when you know um uh, uh, Denim Tears dropped the fucking um tracksuit. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> So the cotton sweatshirt tracksuit thing clearly dentist has a hold in the streets so maybe that was the cause of what he decided to kind of decide to you know change tact and go for there but i think just looking at it from the outside looking in and checking man's instagram and shit and again this doesn't matter because it's just me speculating from the outside but something was something always felt up anyway because it didn't feel like he really was like posting about supreme a lot on his page and maybe it's a, maybe it's like a cool guy thing you don't always want to look like you're happy to have a job or like you're pleased or whatever you're over the moon you always want to kind of keep it somewhat kind of low-key but i always thought that was kind of interesting like why doesn't man post more about supreme like there's not really most any post on there there's not really a lot of posts sorry on his instagram account you know maybe post of him working on stuff maybe you're not allowed to post that shit but i don't know just something there is no indication of that kind of you know role the love he has for it and stuff there's some stuff here and there but you know there's not much so maybe this is an indication that he wasn't really feeling it as much as maybe we thought he was feeling it but um regardless let's check my instagram stories and see if he posted anything there any kind of subtle indications as to why um this uh firing or this letting go happened uh, we got a post here some guy looking incredibly cool actually wearing the boxes that's a really good look 
He's got the denim tears boxes on, you know, some sag pants and a pair of fucking Geo Basket Rick Owens. This is a very, very good look because I would never wear my Geo Baskets like this, but he's actually swagged them out really good. So big up this guy called Forrest Ripperton. You were absolutely freaked out them Ricks and also the Dem Tears boxes. So big up you. There's a post here that features um, the Fiona Applebottom album review from Pitchfork called Fetch the Bolt Cutters. It says, FYI, how's that her last album was the Bolt Cutters? This is interesting. This might be an indication of what happened because this is him saying, I got fired, or I got let go. But then my last collection was one of the best collections ever. Maybe that's maybe an indication of it because he's obviously posting a screenshot of this for you on the Apple Bottom album and Pitchfork review. Maybe. I'm reading into it, but who knows? Um, next slide, you've got, a, I don't know what this picture's from. Maybe it's from a movie. And the caption says, y'all can have it. They give those out for free at, at, at a man in Turks. At the A-man in Turks. Okay, cool. Y'all can have it as in what? Supreme is back to you, the haters and stuff. I don't know what he means by that, but I guess there's some reference to the movie. I'm not really too sure. If you guys know, let me know. Um, there's a post here featuring lyrics of Nas's album, Nigger. And uh, the album, the lyrics goes, they used to string us up. We wanted everything, but the one bringing us cake be the snakes. Like the, like the New Jack City wedding scene. No time for mistakes. Trying to get it like Medellin. They say we N I double G E R. We are much more. Still, we choose to ignore the obvious. Man, this history don't acknowledge us. We were scholars long before colleges. Not really sure where he's getting at with that particular bar, but it's a fucking bar. Um, obviously, big up NAS. I don't know. Maybe that's again. Maybe somebody snicked him at Supreme. Maybe he felt like he was otherized because he was black. I don't know. Who knows? Um, more um, lyrics here, um, courtesy of that track nigger from Nas. The, the ones I can see here says, they say the close ones will hurt you. So let's keep a circle small on the road to riches and diamond rings. So maybe he feels like somebody betrayed him and backstabbed him. Maybe that's the case, why he feels like that happened. So maybe this is not the most, um, this isn't done on good terms, it feels like. Uh, and then we got more here, the album cover of of um, of the album itself features uh, the back of Nas with obviously um, looks like he's been whipped, but in the shape of the N and with Santa, he's got black Santa Claus written on either side. And then we've got a tweet here from Dead in Tears from the 27th that says 40 acres and a tear. Don't know what that means. And then we've got another one here, a post here courtesy of somebody else talking about an exhibition, I think, happening or something. I don't really know. Um, so, yeah, I'm not really too sure what the deal is and what he's talking about here. But from what we can see, it looks like it wasn't it wasn't the most amicable split so far. I can read that, right? Let's just, just check Man's Twitter. Let me see if I can scroll down and see what he says here, courtesy of Man's Twitter. Maybe he said some more, you know, uh, interesting things. What do you say? Um, yeah, cool. So here we go. Today, he said, Kane in Pirates cooking up for September. Another one says that ether, that shit that make your tears burn slow. So again, no indication of what's happening five hours ago, but he has said the following. And then there's any replies here. We stock ready made tears. They're ready made Jesus. Though. Okay, cool. So no one's actually said anything in reply. So it kind of is what it is. Everyone's kind of responding to news as it is. But I think for me, what I've been able to read in between the lines, I think it was probably a combination of things that kind of led to him leaving. I don't think it was one thing and um it's a bit of a shame like i said the last season this season currently sorry is fucking phenomenal maybe one of the best ones out there's so many hard body pieces in this collection that i would instantly fucking wear and if this is the second collection after a dud i would want to see what he does after going forward because clearly he learned from whatever missteps he took in the first and applied it to the second and again i'm just saying that loosely because i still think people are overestimating how much he actually designed i don't think he sat there and designed every fucking single piece that's not how creative directors work um you always work with a team you lead you kind of spec the overall vision and shit um maybe that's the way it goes maybe it's not who knows but that's where i understand it to go but either way i would have liked to have seen more from him as supreme because clearly he had something there and i felt like it was a match a well a well a good match actually because you know him being new yorker intrinsically tied into the streetwear scene um got his own brand already running he kind of knows what to do he's not gonna learn on the job he kind of knows the role knows how to make stuff blah 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 all that stuff kind of would have worked well and also being a bit of a culture kid and shit and a man around town i think that would have worked out too but it didn't so going forward 
I'm interested to know what they will do because I feel like Supreme kind of maybe fucked him in that they're quite faceless. That's one of the beauties about Supreme and Stussy. They kind of are able to consistently put out collection after collection after collection and not really have to kind of bend to the whims and the wiles of their fans because they're a bit faceless. They just churn out the, sh the collections and they're usually a six out of 10 or up going forward. But once you hire a creative director and you slap it all over or everywhere, you have press releases and shit, it kind of makes him the face of the brand, even though he's not. And then all the kind of negative comments kind of get directed towards him because he's the quote unquote face. So they kind of fucked him a little bit in that regard. And then that kind of takes your, your, your focus away from actually fo designing. You're maybe addressing comments. You're thinking about what people are saying. It just it's not really conducive, I think, to um, great creative output personally for me. So going forward, I'm interested to see what they would end up doing. Will they end up going back to how they were before where it's all kind of in-house and you don't really know what I want? Because when that Angelo guy was there, I forgot what his name of his brand is. I think his name is like Angelo Back. I forgot how you pronounce his name, Backy or Back, whatever it was. I apologize. But when he was there, he was technically the creative director, from what I understand. Um, and, you know, when he left, they then made that creative director role and then Tremaine Khan was hired underneath it. So I wonder if now going forward, whether they'll just keep it in house and not have it be a big swanky person and just decide it's kind of something that they kind of split between three people, they have it in a team. Or they just go back to how they were previously because it was working pretty well. They don't need probably need to have it. But if they do do it, I wonder if they'll go and get someone like the woman from Cactus Plant Flea Market to go and do stuff like that. Like she might be a pretty decent fit to go and work at Supreme and kind of do that. I wonder if they would, you know, going forward say, hey, we're going to fucking hire the guy from Cortez, um, Clint to come and work in-house with us and kind of learn on the job and then with the idea of maybe growing into the role being creative director would he take it i don't really know um but it is interesting to see i feel like nowadays the younger designer and kids now i don't think they care about these roles as much as we did my generation and shit i feel like my generation and shit because i know people who legitimately just work at supreme warehouse and shit and to them that's a prestigious job they kind of hold it, you know, they kind of hold that shit. They treat that shit like that they're working at Apple because they get to work at Supreme. It doesn't matter if they're working in the warehouses, working, they work in retail in the fucking stores, they get to work for the brand. So to them, it's a big deal. And they have a vision in their head of maybe working their way up to go to work in the head office, whatever it may be. But I feel like the kids nowadays would rather work a shitty bar job <clears throat> and put all their money that they earn from that bar job into their t-shirt brand, into their brand overall, into their magazine, into their fucking you know um vintage store archive store um styling gig whatever it may be they'd rather do that than work underneath somebody big work at a place like supreme and shit they don't give a fuck it doesn't actually you know capture them like it did to us so i'm interested to know if they would <clears throat> if supreme are going to go down the route of hiring somebody more of tremaine's age group or older or trying to tap somebody young to appeal to a younger market I wonder because I feel like that's one of the reasons why Supreme for me has kind of felt a little bit stale and a little bit dead because there's clearly been a shift in trying to appeal to more kids but it's kind of meant there's an overabundance of like logo driven stuff and you see a lot of the fucking logo everywhere and it's not it's not like tonal anymore the logo on on the clothes that they put on the logo they put on the clothes isn't tonal it's mostly like just the actual thing in different colors and shit so you see it from fucking far so obviously you know kids love branding and shit and big logos so they do a lot more of that so i wonder if they get another person in who's a bit older who maybe has a different type of aesthetic they may want to like tone that shit down again and bring supreme back to kind of what it kind of was where there was some flashy bits here and there but it wasn't all flashy and whether or not that would hit with the clients or with the customers or this is just the natural state of things if you're supreme and you accept 2.2 billion dollar investment and you're now making you know launching all these different stores you've got a store in south korea another store opening already i think in italy and many more maybe to come which you would imagine means you increase the quantities and the amounts of stuff that you make which would then result in you having more stock on the shelves because there's a lot more of it out there so the resale and just the limited edition aspect of supreme is kind of not what it used to be um, it just basically means you're going to have more stock and you're not going to be making more money because you're spending more on making the stuff. So maybe with that being said, it's hard to really pin the, pin the blame on any one person because, you know, you're making more. Um, there's <clears throat> more brands than ever taking up people's attention. Like, for instance, having been this person, no jumper, 
I've been exposed to this whole different scene of these Instagram LA brands like Half Evil. Half Evil I've never really known about, but they have they have a completely different scene that they all kind of infatuated with where they don't give a fuck about Stussy or Supreme and shit. They just care about those type of brands. So I'd imagine a lot of kids, their attention or their wallet spend is being split across all these different brands. So it's hard to maybe get those kids to spend the money they'll spend on Half Evil and then spend it on fucking Supreme. So that might be an issue too. It's just nowadays it's just more competition. You're having to kind of compete with more brands for the customer's money. Um, so I want interested to see what happens going forward progress wise. But as I said, um, if you're going to go out with a bang, you know, this is one way to go out with a bang. I feel like um, spring 2023 was legitimately is at the moment one of their best collections they've done in a very fucking long time. Um, everything in this collection is fucking hard body, beyond hard body. I'd wear their fuck out of everything. So if he did go out in style, then big up um, Tremaine for doing so. And hopefully we get an explanation as to what actually went on and what occurred. We probably never will. But I do think it's a cautionary tale for, you know, designers out there and brand owners out there to not always hold these positions up you know on a pedestal because at the end of the day you're still working for somebody you're still an employee and you have to meet targets and shit and it is a cut for industry and if you don't and you don't end up kind of get fired or let go it can do some real damage to your you know to your confidence to your ego to your momentum whatever it may be so it can be a very um, you have to be very cautious about taking these positions. It's not always a positive thing to do. It maybe is better to kind of suffer and you know spend the time focusing on your own brand because then at least you get to kind of write your own legacy, do your own thing, and kind of you know the success of your brand is kind of you know relegated to the kind of success of the stuff that you do yourself. So you don't have to kind of you know clock in and clock in with somebody else. You know what I mean. But yeah, regardless, good way to go out if that is a full collection. You absolutely smashed it still, and I think this stuff is gonna be you know it's gonna definitely be up there in the fucking supreme hall of fame when it all said and done when it's all said and done